morning and welcome all my friends from all over the world who are listening to us now on the World Wide Web. You are watching me in beautiful Kingston, Jamaica. Guess what? Yesterday was my birthday. Yay! And it seems that, whether by design or happenstance, around this time every year, I'm scheduled to speak. Now, this is a significant birthday, but I'm not going to tell you which one. After all, age is just a number, right? Ernest Holmes, writing in the Science of Mind text, said, People don't stop living because they grow old. They grow old because they stop living. With that in mind, I've titled my presentation this morning, You Make Me Feel So Young, after the popular song from a few decades ago by Rosemary Clooney. Now, how youthful you are has very little to do with how young you are chronologically. Growing is as much defined by what you are not as it is by defining what you are. Acceptance of yourself, warts and all, and being willing to release our perceived weaknesses will free us to grow into our strongest selves, fearlessly and graciously. Change is inevitable, so fighting against it is really quite futile. Growth is a natural and inevitable process of change, and that growth will involve aging. But does aging have to mean a descent into morbidity, unattractiveness, and a loss of passion? Absolutely not! The only constant in life is change. And we see this in nature all the time. Flowers fade. The fruits of summer fade. They have their seasons, and so do we. But a change does not necessarily signify an end. More often, there is a pause before we reawaken to our new experience. We reawaken from our self-imposed hibernation, so to speak. We awaken to our next greater yet to be adventure on this journey through life. Wayne Dyer, writing in his book, The Sky is the Limit, has this to say, and I quote, once you recognize change as the inevitable condition of being human, you will be more inclined to welcome it in the significant parts of your own personal life. If you can get yourself used to the idea that change is wonderful rather than something to shun, you will be on your way to new, exciting, risk-taking behaviors which will give purpose to your life before you even recognize it." End quote. Now my question, how willing are you to take a risk? Whatever age you may be. Now taking a risk does not have to involve cliff diving or bungee jumping, although that's okay too. It can be as simple as changing your hairstyle, taking a new route in your daily activities, trying a new dish or a new dance. Being youthful is usually demonstrated through curiosity, exuberance, joy, playfulness, openness, and vulnerability, trust, persistence, expectation, a sense of adventure. Life is never stagnant. It is about action, movement, enthusiasm, discovery. It is fear that stops us from diving into life with an eagerness to taste everything on that menu. The desire for change is often preceded by a very uncomfortable feeling. A feeling that tells us a new way of being is trying to emerge. Now if we're paying attention, we may be very aware of physical pain, or a strong feeling of disorientation or confusion. As with any process of growth, Taking the next step is a great leap of faith. And it can be very scary. We're being called to explore new territory, to embark on a hitherto unknown journey 
towards a brand new yet to be revealed destination. And for some, as we age, the fear looks like the fear of the autumn of life, or perhaps the winter of life. The fear of old age, or even fear of death. When last did you look in the mirror? Hmm? Did you like what you saw? If you're over 60, I'm willing to bet you saw a couple things that you would prefer not to see just yet. But there is a way to let go of the familiar and allow a graceful transition, an ending to a current experience, so that you can passionately embrace a new possibility. If you only keep repeating what you know, you limit the possibility of learning something new, of discovering the what next of the growth process. Ernest Holmes tells us, unless you keep doing new things, we will not have the interest to do new things. Now there is a creative aspect to change. Stagnation is not creative. Progress is eternal. Unfoldment is everlasting. Every new horizon provides a fresh starting point for another horizon, ad infinitum. One step builds on another step and another step. There is no point of arrival. We're not supposed to get there. Every time we learn something new, it awakens within us a thirst to learn something new. The goal is sure to be attained by all, because we all have the ability to live fully through life's changes, to set our sights on newness and creative self-expression. The poet T.S. Eliot puts it this way, only those who go too far will ever know how far it's possible to go. I use that class at the beginning, that, that quotation at the beginning of my design class every semester. Only those who go too far will ever know how far it's possible to go. Ralph Waldo Emerson, writing in his essay Circles, had this to say, and I quote, people wish to be settled, but only so far as they are unsettled is there any hope for them, end quote. Now I've identified five keys that open the doorway to an abundant, youthful life, forever young. Number one, do what intrigues you. Explore what interests you. Think mystery rather than mastery. Dare to dream. Become as little children, totally engaged in the imaginative landscapes and characters that bring excitement and possibilities. Number two, don't forget to play. Yes, a little fun can go a long way towards making life more livable and more lovable. Play, play is at the heart of all good creative work. Carl Jung, the noted psychologist said, and I quote, the creation of something new is not accomplished by the intellect, but by the play instinct acting from inner necessity, end quote. Now for some of us, the older we get, the more we forget to play, as if maturity is synonymous with being some staid old fuddy-duddy. No, remember Jesus' promise, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The more we realize that God is all and all good, and we acknowledge our oneness with it, we know there is nothing to force, pursue, or fear. We simply recognize the presence and allow its free expression so we can be fearless, not reckless, but fearless. Which brings me to our third key. Every desire you have is an idea seeking expression through you. And it wouldn't be knocking on the door seeking to be let out if the time was not right for you to do it. It's not necessary to know what's on the other side of that door. Taking a risk involves letting go of fear. Every birth involves risk, whether we're talking about birthing a new experience, 
a new idea, or a baby. You think the chicken pecking at the, the eggshell knows what's outside the shell? You think the baby making its way out of the womb with steadfast determination knows what's outside once it leaves that nice, comfortable environment? Probably not. But there is a divine urge and urgency to express more. The doctors and scientists can elaborate on the psychology of it and the physiology of it. But what is it that triggers that desire? What is it that says, okay, time to move on, take the next step? And when that call is given, the chicken or the baby or whatever it is cannot be held back from this next phase of expression. We came into this world with that urge to grow, to be and do more. It's the same driving force that tells a blade of grass it can push through concrete. It's the same driving force that makes a gross caterpillar know when it's time to transform into a delicate airborne butterfly with gossamer wings. Number four. This transformative energy, which we know as God, is always seeking to expand our expression of it. But it needs our cooperation. Willingness is our fourth key. If we try and stop the process, the life cycle is thwarted. And we can experience maybe guilt, shame, despair, or we could just die. Not necessarily physically, but emotionally, and mentally, life is not static. When something is reduced on one end, something is increased on the other end. If we're just marking time, we can miss out on many opportunities for growth and expansion. An important question we might ask ourselves is, what is my life wanting to express? What is it trying to tell me right now? We're in the growth process, whether we like it or not, whether we recognize it or not. So we might as well make a decision to work with the program and commit to following through on divine promptings. Remember, change is inevitable. However, self-awareness is a necessary ingredient in the process of change. Which leads me to authenticity, our fifth key. Being authentic means allowing the real you to be fully present and exposed, warts and all. And this takes courage. It is this courage that is going to allow you to take responsible control of your life and grow up. Yes, grow up and take stock of who you are being in this world. So is it possible to grow up and still keep that sense of wonder and curiosity, exuberance and playfulness, trust and expectation, that wonderful sense of adventure and openness? Of course it is. These are part and parcel of who we are. We can allow dust to settle over them or we can bury them deep after some trauma. But they haven't gone anywhere. This is still you, the ageless, deathless, eternally youthful you. With maturity, these may be expressed differently, but not necessarily with any less enthusiasm. We must covenant with ourselves to live from a consciousness of knowing who we truly are and being confident enough in that knowing to choose to create our lives by deliberate design. Thomas Troward in his book, The Creative Process and the Individual says, and I quote, the incessant and progressive creativeness is the very essence and being of spirit. In other words, we don't get to not create. He continues, if then we keep this progressive creativeness of the spirit continually in mind, we may rely upon its working as surely in ourselves as in that great cosmic forward movement which we speak of as evolution. This suggests to me that we're dealing with a law. 
And with any other natural law, we don't have to force it to work. We simply comply with its nature and allow it to do what it does. We came to this earth to live full out, to live out the highest and truest vision of ourselves, to use fully our value as a human being. It is our responsibility to allow ourselves to grow and expand into our best selves, our authentic selves with joy and passion and elegant grace, allowing ideas of unfoldment to flow freely, fearlessly, and effortlessly. And we don't need anybody's permission to do that. Let us affirm, I dive enthusiastically into life. I am the exuberant, ever youthful playfulness of creation. The depth and breadth of our personal development is linked to an expanded, up-leveled vision of who we're knowing ourselves to be at any given moment in time. So embrace change. Welcome growth and evolution. Wonder comes from a new perception, a new perspective, not the same old, same old story. If lately you've been feeling like your get up and go was got up and gone, let your new story be about nurturing your life in every way possible by opening yourself to new ways of thinking and feeling. The Sufi mystic Rumi tells us, sell bewilderment and buy wonder. I'd like to close with an affirmation from Ernest Holmes in his book, This Thing Called You. Every breath I draw is a breath of perfection, vitalizing and upbuilding and renewing every cell of my body. I am born of spirit. I am in the spirit. I am the spirit made manifest. And so it is. Namaste.